Hello, everyone. My name is Gary Trinder. I'm a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about how you're going to be able to bring your existing projects to Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. So what I'm going to do is cover a few uh, new features that are coming in the, the, the next release of, of Teams uh, Toolkit. It's going to make it much easier for you to take what you have, bring it to Teams Toolkit if you've had issues uh, in the uh, in the past that for whatever reason you've not been able to uh, uh, to, to try it out with existing projects. Um, I just want to quickly cover uh, kind of the scenario of of what you typically go through at the moment to create a uh, a Microsoft Teams app. Let's say you're creating a project, you're creating a uh, a bot. Um, one of the things that you're going to have to do first of all is go into Azure and do some setup. You're going to have to configure Azure AD, AD app registrations, uh, an Azure bot service, uh, configure SSO as well on, on Azure AD. You're then going to have to set up your project. Um, you know, you might be cloning a sample from somewhere. You're going to have to uh, run NPM install to get all the, uh, the modules in. You're going to have to update the environment variables as well, adding all the IDs and secrets of everything that you've just set up in uh, in Azure as well, moving all those across. Then when you've got all that set up, you need to start your web server. But you first need to start NGROC. You need the tunnel um, so that the the, uh, the bot service can talk to your uh, code uh, on, on your local machine, send messages backwards and, and forwards. That gives you a dynamic url um so you need to update your app, manif app manifest uh you then need to update the bot and tell tell the bot which messaging um uh, url to use uh, in the new domain then start your web server and then finally once you've done all that you then need to package up your uh, your app create your your app manifest um as well and then sideload that into teams it's a lot of effort before you even started really thinking about code and developing. It's a lot of lot of work, and hopefully this is going to be in the past now. So if this is the if this this is the current, if this is going to be the past, what's going to replace it? Well, automation. We don't want to have to do all of these things. We just want to hit a button and it happen. And Teams Talk at Visual Studio Code uh, is an extension that is helping helping people now do that to uh, create and debug and deploy publish microsoft teams apps into their tenants really fast just create a project press f5 and just start developing you know no more manual configurations or, or setups just let that automation do the groundwork for you leaving you time to uh, actually develop your your applications however <laughs> Teams Toolkit, great for getting started. However, there's 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 a few issues with the current version in, in how it's been uh, designed. And it, we see comments like this, like, I don't really know what Toolkit is doing behind the scenes. It's not really clear what is happening. I'm hitting F5, magic's happening. That's great, but I really want to know. And I want to be able to change what it's doing as well. It's, it's doing most things for me, but actually I want to add bits to it and extend um, extend what Toolkit is providing. An important one, I want to reuse resources that have already been provisioned rather than Toolkit go and create everything from, from scratch, like every app is brand new. I actually want to bring my own bot service. I want to bring my own Azure AD app registrations um, and let Toolkit use that. And a final one as well, um, certainly in the, in the bot scenario, is you know I can't use NGROC as my organization blocks it, which means I can't use the, the tool because it, it's very opinionated. It wants to use NGROC for, for that tunneling. So the good news is uh, all of this feedback has been taken on board and has been addressed in, in the new version, which is, which is coming. So I'm just going to quickly go through some of these key features. Um, one of the big improvements is this concept of a project file. Um, and this project file is, if you're familiar with uh, GitHub workflows, um, it's a YAML file which basically describes the whole process. So whereas before, oh, I, I don't really know what's happening. Well, now it's in one file. You can see what is happening at different stages. And there's three different stages that that this project file can have this workflow. So you've got a provision um, stage, a deploy stage, and a publish stage as well. We can uh, execute these independently and add tasks uh, into these uh, in, into these phases. 
and these tasks are actions. So each action um, is kind of like an individual block that just describes that step of what's actually uh, going to happen. It's really clear and easy to see what exactly is happening um, and and when it's happening as well, and the, the steps that that uh, that it's it's going to take. So the new Teams toolkit comes with a set of predefined actions. Um, there are actually 26 available actions, and here, here are all of them. Don't worry if you can't catch them um, because it's all documented. If you want to go take a look, go to aka.ms slash teamsfx dash actions. And these are all of the actions that enable you as a developer to just add and extend these project files with your actions. And they cover a whole host of you know, very specific uh, tasks like creating and updating uh, Azure AD app registrations to more generic uh, kind of you know, run NPM commands, uh, run an ARM deployment as well. So there's a wide range of, uh, of of actions that you can choose from. And finally, uh, for the the people who uh, you know are not able to use Ngrok, uh, Ngrok is no longer going to be the default. Um, so as of the, the 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 next version, Visual Studio Dev Tunnels is going to be used as the default tunneling service as well. So that's just going to be running. That's in uh, Visual Studio Code. We still got the dynamic uh, URL in there as well, but uh, if you're an organization that is you know, blocking Ngrok, then this is something that you can uh, look into. If you still want to use Ngrok though, you can obviously change back um, and there's documentation for, for you to be able to do that as well. Okay, so I was talking about bringing your project uh, to Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. So. What I wanted to show was um, a process that I went through recently where I started with a sample, uh, this Teams conversation bot, the SSO Quick Start, um, which is a very simple uh, sample, which is you know, just implementing SSO. Uh, it's using an Azure bot service and it's using the SSO uh, uh, OAuth uh, configuration uh, feature in Azure bot service. And what I wanted to do is to just bring that into Teams Toolkit. And this is the process that I, that I went through. So to quickly give you an overview of the steps, I created a new project for Teams Toolkit. I didn't have to. Um, I could have just added some of the, the files in from Toolkit into, into my project, but I just wanted a bit of a clean slate. Um, so I then copied environment variables of my old project to my, my new project. I updated the app manifest moved the source code over, updated the dependencies, and then updated the workflow steps to make sure that uh, the app was working in exactly the same way um, as it was previously, but it was in toolkit running, giving me that F5 uh, capability to get up and running really quickly. And I have a migrated project. So uh, if you want to go look, after, uh, look at the, the final uh, code, the final project, um, this is all available on GitHub at, at the uh, URL uh, below, uh, and I'll share that uh, afterwards. So let's take a look at uh, some code. Uh, well, actually, first, let's take a look at the existing app. So the existing app has an uh, Azure AD. Uh, app registration, so it's all set up. I went through, did all this uh, manually, so all my hard work I could reuse in the new Teams toolkit. I didn't have to start from from scratch. Um, and I've got bot service as well, uh, which is all configured. Um, it's got OAuth configuration in there as well. This was already provided. So there's all there's all my uh, details uh, in in there. And here is the actual project. So this is the old project. Uh, so this is not in Teams Toolkit, but we can see we've got an app package here. Uh, so I've got my manifest, which I had to manually zip up and then uh, actually uh, deploy manually into my uh, uh, Teams environment so, so that I could actually test it. Uh, we've got uh, some source code. So we've got a bots folder, dialog folder, we've got the index.js as well, which which where our web server um, code uh, uh, lives. Uh, we've got the environment variables as well. So in here we've got the app IDs, the app passwords, connection names, um, things that we can reuse in our in our application. Oh, we've also got a graph client as well. This is doing SSO. It's it's actually calling the the graph. So let's take a look at the uh, the project, the final project, and I'll step through 
um, the areas of the project where I, I made changes um, to, uh, to bring all of this into uh, Teams Toolkit project. So here we have our project. Uh, so this was just created using a, uh, a bot template um, using the Teams Toolkit Create New App wizard. So this is a V5 project. Um, so uh, we can see I've got my bots folder. I've got my dialogues folder. So this is the source code from, from the other uh, project. I have my app package up here, which contains my, my manifest, uh, which I, I brought across. We have an M folder, which contains all of my environment variables as well. Um, so I copied those across. I've also got an infra folder, which is just you know, it's enhanced the sample already because you, by default, you get bicep files that will provision some of the uh, the resources in Azure. One of them is the Azure bot, and that was great because I already had a bicep file that I could take and then amend for for my uh, for my own own needs. Uh, also, got a simple graph client code there as well, and the the index.js, which uh, which was the the web server code. So first thing I, that I actually did was I moved all the environment variables over. So let's take a look at the uh, env.local file. So in here, I simply just copied in and pasted the values into here. I didn't have to do anything, just provided it the, the ID that, that already exists. And um, in this case, it's the, I, the bot ID and the team's app ID are exactly the same, but I updated those placeholders. Um, and then what I did was I updated my manifest. So if I come into the manifest, here's pretty much a carbon copy of, of what the old project was. However, because I'm in Teams Toolkit, I get the ability to uh, add placeholder values. So you can see here I'm using this token replacement. You can see the value in there. So you can really uh, easily inject these, these variable values uh, into the manifest. So this is something that actually was available in, in the V4 projects. But actually now in V5, it's even better because these placeholders go everywhere. Uh, you can use them across your whole project and they will just get injected in uh, build time, which is really, really useful. Um, so I'd already mentioned uh, I've brought the environment variables across. I've updated my manifest, and I've brought my source code uh, across as well. Now, um, one of the things which which I mentioned earlier was this uh, project file. So this teams app uh, .local .yaml file is is where kind of like the the magic happens when I hit F5. Here's all the provisioning that's going to take place, like creating the teams app, um, creating the the uh, bot uh, Active Directory app as well. Now, it, even though it says create, uh, it actually does an update as well. So it's idempotent, which is nice. So it'll just, you know, if you can run this as many times as you like, it'll either, if it doesn't exist, it'll create it. If uh, if it's uh, it does exist, it will just update it as, as well. Now, uh, this whole file is the default file. Um, I've actually commented one section out um, because I had to I had to update it. So it's worth knowing that when you create a bot using Teams Toolkit, it uses bot framework portal to create a, a bot registration. Now, the sample that I'm using is using an Azure uh, bot service, and it's using a feature from that service for it to work. So I couldn't use this, um, but because of the flexibility of the tool, I was actually able to a, create an ARM template, a bicep template, which goes and updates that uh, that bot service every time I hit F5, which is great because I know that my dynamic URL for my tunnel is going to be changing every single time, and I need to update that uh, in my in my bot on, on my bot as well. And um, so that was nice that I was able to add in this ARM deploy uh, step instead. And um, so so that, that can actually deploy things into Azure, even though I'm doing quote, local development. And then finally, what I added was um, a file to update my SSO permissions on uh, the Azure AD app. And I could do that by adding in this AAD manifest JSON. I actually went to the Azure portal, copied the whole manifest, dropped it into this file, added in some placeholders as well. So get that ability to add in the, the bot ID. 
Uh, and in here, you know, we've got all the required resources. Toolkit's actually doing some hard work for us. It's actually telling us, you know, translating the ID to the to the display name. Um, and I can come into here and I can add more scopes if I want. I can hit F5 and that will go up. Um, you know, it'll go and update that in Azure. And it's the same for the uh, for the bot service as well. If I go into Infra, I have this Azure bots bicep file, and in here it defines the uh, the, the service details, which channels that I need, and also the graph connection as well. So if I want to change the scopes, I don't have to go into the portal anymore. I could just change it in here, hit F5, and that will be uh, done for me. So real benefits of, of using um, Teams Toolkit here in the fact that I've taken a sample, which was uh, hard and a lot of manual kind of uh, labor to get to get going. Now it's in a great place. I can actually share this with other members of, of my team and, and they could just hit F5 and it'll go and actually provision all of this stuff for them without actually needing to go to the, uh, the, the portal, which is a fantastic, a fantastic update. So all of this is available for, for you to, today. Uh, you can try the next version of Teams Toolkit. Just click the switch uh, to pre-release a version in, um, in Visual Studio Code in the, in the marketplace if you've already got it installed. And if you want to check out uh, the, the guide as well for more details on V5 and what is coming, go to aka.ms slash teamsfx dash v5.0 dash guide. And with that, thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Gary. Thank you.